Hello everybody out there, this is Glenn, and I am back. And I would love for you to hit like and subscribe. I must say I've been very um, thankful for the last video that I've done. It, it tracked better than any videos videos that I've ever done before. And I'd like to thank y'all, give yourselves a hand. Um, one of the things I did, you know, when, when we are out here talking about the society, all of us together, whether or not you want to call us apostates, like I said, is up to you. But a lot of times, you know, people that have been raised as a Jehovah's Witness, like myself, sometimes you have doubts, reservations. Um, I'm not affiliated with no other religious group out there, so sometimes... You might think, am I doing the right thing? Um, it, 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 maybe it's just human nature because you've been in something so long. And I have been disfellowshipped for like over 20 years, but I still had it in the back of my mind. One of the things I did <clears throat> when I made my video, I talked to my brother about it. And unbeknownst to me, before I had talked to my brother, I had prayed. And I had prayed to Joel. I said, Joel, if I'm doing the wrong thing, send me a subtle sign and I'll stop. Um, and my brother said he did the same thing. He was, he, I, I'm not gonna say he was worried about me, but he was like, man, Glenn is focusing a lot of time and effort on this. Is he doing the right thing? Could he be wasting his time? Well, I will tell you this. Um, I had made the video and in two days it had maybe a hundred and, I'm sorry, one of my videos had 41, the other one had 47. And when I did the prayer, which was, I guess, that morning or whatever, in that one day, I had 1,900 views. The next day, 2,000 views. And it's only been out like nine days. So it's really, it keeps progressing. And my brother said, there you go. That's your sign. So I'm going to take it at that. I'm going to take it at that. My father is an elder. I even talked to him and he said, Glenn, do, do what your heart tells you to do. Here we are. Uh, my goal, everybody has a goal in mind that they want. And my goal is for the society, the Jehovah Witness quacks to go bankrupt. I won't stop until you go bankrupt. So if you, if you're in a governing body and you see this, I'm not going to stop until you are out of business. Out of business. Um, one of the things I want to talk about. For people that are witnesses, I had about four people call me. Witnesses, Joe Witnesses, call me and say, Glenn, why are you so going so hard on us? I said, listen. Why is it that you don't question someone that tells you not to look at something? I mean, before you buy a house, before you purchase something from Amazon, Walmart, anywhere else, you're going to do your research on it before you buy a car. I'm in the car business. So a lot of times when people come out to look at a car, they already know everything about it. So why is it that they have a hard time with you trying to find out about the organization? Why? I mean, just look into the past. See where it came from. See what the, the foundation of it was. What is wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with it after I tell you this. One of the things is the reason why the society will not, don't they don't want their people to look back and to see how the organization got started is because they're trying to protect their investment right now. Now, Brother Let goes, I think his name is Brother Let. I think it is. The one that keeps talking about we're at the end of the end of the end and end. He used end about four or five times. Okay. By the way, the guy used to come to our house, eat fried chicken from my mom. She used to cook for him. He was a circuit overseer. Just throw a little tad bit in. So, <laughs> the witnesses are building a 249 acre property in. I guess I'm trying to pronounce it right, Ramapo, I guess it's in Ramapo. And the place is at 155 Sterling Mine Road 
in Slotesburg, New York. It's not going to be ready until 2026. And this is a massive production studio. Go online, look it up. Put in 155 Sterling Mine Road, and you will see it. I have talked to these witnesses that did call me, and they didn't know anything about it. Go figure. But any of you witnesses out there right now, go to 155 Sterling Mine Road, Slopesburg, New York, and it'll come up. That's why they don't want you to listen to people like me and so many other people out there. We're not bad-mouthing them. We're just reporting what's online. You keep telling your members, keep investing, keep giving us your money, keep giving us your money. The time is near. The time is near. But you're building a massive, massive project, and the end is going to come. If the, if the end is so close, why don't you take that money and the people that have served in Bethel for 40, 50 years that you just kicked out, why don't you build a facility to house them? Why don't you build a facility to let's get people ready for the new world? You have a lot of witnesses that live in poverty. So why don't you reach out to them? Say, look, we're building a property. We're going to have y'all move up here because we're getting ready for the end of the world. Show me that. You're not going to do that. They're not going to do it. All right. So now we don't went over. That's one thing that you can check out. Now, one of the things that is very... I guess one of the things I said I was talking about, like with the bankruptcy, I, I want them to go bankrupt because I don't want them to finish this property that they're trying to build. Now, with all the CSA scandals going on, that's what eventually is going to happen. Members are going to start leaving. People are going to cut back on their contributions. They're paying some expensive lawyers to take care of what they're trying to um, cover all these cases or the hash them out. So when that happens, guess what's going to happen next? When the money dries up, the members go away, the society is going to start selling all those timeshare properties they have. And you know what I'm talking about. Kingdom Halls. Nobody owns the Kingdom Halls anymore. Society owns all of them. So when they put their contribution in, they put their money in, yeah, they paid a little electric bill and stuff, uh, insurance and everything like that, but they don't own the building. That sounds like a timeshare. What you think? All right, now, we buy that. So now, they don't want you to see some of the things that the society don't want, want you to know, know about is their past. Okay? We're going to go over three things, and then we're going to have a solution. Most people don't have a solution, but we got a solution for you. So, three things I want you to talk about. If, you, if you're a witness, I want you to think about this. Or if you're thinking about becoming a witness. Or you're on the fence. When you look at the past of the Jehovah's Witnesses and how they felt about black people, it'll blow your mind. They pretty much thought we were monkeys. They were like, there was nothing, there is nothing else better than a good colored servant. He is the most humble and will do whatever you want him to do. Like he's a circus clown. It's one. Just fellowship. In 1947, they went against the Catholic Church calling what the Catholic Church did, which was excommunicating, they said that it was pagan. And the only reason why they did it was to keep their members. Remember that. 1952, the witnesses adopted this fellowship. And why do you think they, they adopted, that, adopted that? So that you don't want to be shunned by your family. So you will stay in. And in that way, you keep your members. Wow. The last thing I want you to ask a Jehovah Witness, if you talk to one, or if you are a Jehovah Witness, why didn't Jesus Christ never talk about that? And why didn't your, our ultimate leader, which is Jehovah God, why didn't he disfellowship Satan the devil? When I say that, Satan the devil had access to heaven. When he was going to tempt Job, he was in the assembly of the angels. When he spoke to Jesus Christ, Jesus didn't tell him, you know I'm not, talk, I'm not supposed to talk to you. 
He just said, get behind me and say, he knows God, you must worship. Think about that. Now, another thing, birthdays. I always had a problem with that when I was little. I was like, eh, there's nothing in the Bible in reference to birthdays. Well, you talk to a Jehovah's Witness like I had just the other day. He said, man, we can't give glorify to people on that day. I said, well, the Bible didn't say anything about it. He said, well, two prophets were killed. And at that particular time they were killed, it was a birthday celebration. I said, what does that have to do with a birthday? One was trickery was used in killing one of those prophets. Matter of fact, John the Baptist. That was trickery. Yeah, it didn't have anything to do with that birthday celebration. But even if you want to use that, what if someone was getting married and the prophets were killed? Or if somebody was at a bridal shower and a prophet was killed, so we wouldn't celebrate those? What is the difference of a birthday celebration and someone, if you're celebrating the birth of a child? Or if you're celebrating the birth of, I mean, not the birth, but the, the anniversary of a wedding. Somebody been married 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You celebrate that. Please tell me what's the difference between that and birthday. All right, now. So, I hit you with those little three things. If you are a Jehovah Witness, and you're like, you know what? I kind of agree with Glenn, but what can I do? Where can I go? I have the perfect solution for you. So what you do, you're in the Kingdom Hall. You have an association of friends. You know your friends. Because normally people have tight friends. So what you do, you look at the landscape. You scope out your friends. Ask pertinent questions. Don't go overboard. Just ask. Hey, man, you ever thought about this fellowship? Why Job and another this fellowship say? Get their response. Or say something. Kind of in a negative, slick way to see what kind of response you get from your friends. Once you get that trust factor, tell them what you're thinking. Tell them you have your doubts. What do you say? Ask them, man, I have these doubts. What do you think about it? Do you think I'm kind of becoming an apostate? Or do you, do you think I'm falling out? Or I mean, help me out. They'll tell a lot. You'll be surprised. They'll tell you, man, I'm feeling the same way. So if you gain about four or five of those people, then if they shun you, you could care less. Because the, how they get you is kick you out. You've been in the organization 20, 30 years. You don't have no friends. You don't have nobody to associate with. But if you take care of that before you leave, then it won't bother you. So remember what I said. The friends that you have, feel them out. And if you get a sense that they're down for what you are down for, bounce. Then you don't have to worry about it. So, and that's your support group. Because it's very important to have a support group. Once you leave those quacks, is you got to have a support group. You don't want to be out there all alone. There's people online, but you don't know us all. You don't know us personally. The people that are right there with you. If you're a young guy, you know you got guys you play basketball with. I did. If you're a young lady, you got girls that you know and other girls, women in other kingdom halls that you're tight with. Go out of town. Spend the weekend. Get that one-on-one -on -one conversation. And once you develop that bond, hey, y'all, I'm getting out of this joint. Y'all with me? That's how you do it. The sun is setting on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's make it happen.